Hi, this is Gabe Ojeda Sage with your Canon Challenge for week 10, where we cover some recent poetry trends, especially related to conceptual and quote unquote unoriginal writing. Conceptualism as a school of writing that emphasizes ready made forms, found language, remix, procedure, and idea driven works certainly activates a lot of taste based and aesthetic concerns, but it also activates some ethical concerns. Namely, the issue of remastering found language often leads to questions like, who's the author of a work that is sourced in something else? Who has rights to the found material that makes up a new piece? And who has rights to the new piece? Are there some material that just shouldn't be appropriated for art making? Or are there some materials that should only be appropriated by certain kinds of people? Some of these questions came to a head in the last decade, especially around the issue of the formal appropriation of racial texts and images. If anyone's interested in that debate, one of its most powerful documents is Kathy Park Hong's Delusions of Whiteness in the Avant-Garde essay, which is available online still. And one of the debate's main objects of scrutiny was a piece by Kenneth Goldsmith constructed out of the text of the autopsy of Michael Brown. I think the Hong essay is really worth a read, not just because it's fabulous and ferocious, but because it argues that the subjectivity of an author always remains in the poem, no matter what direction the experimentation takes it in. That's an important argument to consider for our course, agree or otherwise, especially in these last few weeks in language, chance space, and conceptual poetry. In fact, we discussed some similar issues in a video on a debate between Ron Silliman and Leslie Scalapino, which can be found in ModPo Plus Chapter 9.1. At stake in these debates around conceptualism and found language is really the question of how the subjectivity and the social position of an author remains in a work that's otherwise found or unoriginal. A lot of our main syllabus writers come at that question in super interesting ways, like Tracy Morris's history condensing song poem or Eric Baum's wonderfully perverse take on the library. Something that's attractive about conceptualism and procedural writing is its immense accessibility from a writing standpoint. Anybody has the technical proficiency to make a poem like Via, Carolyn Bergvall's poem which I think is an exciting and good thing because it means more people can make art and sometimes even together. But it begs the question for us as people studying poetry, why these writers? If anybody can do it, why should I care that Michael McGee did it? It's a fair question because canon formation and conceptual writing is compromised and complicated on purpose. We picked this small sliver of writers because the art that they made feels instructive and instrumental to us. But talk to any conceptualist or any scholar of conceptualism, and you'll quickly realize that they all have quite different canons. In a perfect world, it's an artistic genre that anyone can practice, that subverts authorship itself, and creates a really wide field of artist practitioners. But of course, in reality, things like institutional support, who you know, Disposable income and demographic difference still shape these canons. Through all of this, I do want to emphasize that many contemporary writers from all kinds of backgrounds feel an attraction to conceptualism, in part because it's really wide and open field of aesthetic possibilities, in part because of its accessibility, in part because of its ability to make the ordinary feel extraordinary or even a little disturbing, and in part because of its slant relationship to other kinds of cultural production and art making. It's a bit of a troublemaker genre, but I hope that you find your way through it. And if you find yourself intrigued and a little curious, go ahead and read further with Monpo Plus or ask some TAs and community members for further recommendations. See ya.